Hi, this is Andrew from DPS. I want to give you a quick tour of our tech lab. This really is at the core of the engineering department. This is a place where we have a variety of different equipment, and I'll walk you through some of it now. To start with, we have a lot of our own DPS equipment. We have some NetGuardian remotes here. We have some Team on Master stations. And we keep these because if you call in for tech support, if you're having trouble setting something up, we want to be able to follow right along with you. It's kind of odd, but because we're such a lean manufacturer and we build everything to order, if we're not careful about this, we could ship a unit to you and that might be the only one that exists. So we need to be sure that we have duplicates here. So we're very careful to do that. Also in the tech lab, we have some third party equipment because if you say have a hundred old RTUs and you're looking to maintain support for those easy, even as your older master might be dying, that's a common mission for our team on master. So to do that, we ask you to send us at least one of your remotes, maybe a few, so that we can do some testing, work out the protocol, and devise a team on device module that's customized for that particular piece of gear that you have so that we can make our team on compatible with it. And then you have a new master station that works with all your gear, both old and new at the same time. While we're here in the tech lab, I do want to walk through some of the back panels here. I think they're kind of uh, interesting to look at because Connectorization is a common question I hear in sales. So you can see there are a variety of different NetGuardians here, but they all share a lot of similar connectors. So let's start up top here. We have a NetGuardian 420, and this might be a good place to start. So you can see the power connectors. These are usually on the left of every RTU that we make, and it's usually two. So we have an A and a B feed here, and let's see, there's two fuses, because it wouldn't make much sense to have one fuse, even though you have two inputs. That doesn't really help the single point of failure along, so we try to have dual everything on the power side. This is a little temperature sensor that just sticks out the back of the chassis, and then this D-wire port is where you can daisy chain additional sensors all around the room, so if you wanted to do that, you can use that port. And then the 50-pin Amphenol, I hear a lot of questions about this, some people aren't sure how to terminate. This commonly will go to a 66 block or a wire wrap panel, we have a pluggable back plane. We also, you can just go to bare wire if you want to splice in the pairs yourself. So this is a handy way to terminate a lot of different inputs and outputs. In this case, it's 20 discrete inputs and four control relays. This NetGuardian 420 also has a couple of serial ports. So this is four. And then we have a 10100 switch here for the network side. And this is where your main network connection comes in. This has two NICs. So this is net one, and then the switch here is net two. Here's a smaller remote. You can see it's quite similar, but this is a NetGuardian 216. And you can see that it's got a 50-pin Amphenol for its discrete analogs and controls. We pick up the last two analogs, number three and four, here on this four-pin connector. And uh, then we have a serial port, dual power inputs, as I mentioned. And then uh, this is a little network jack right here. So most of the NetGuardians share the same basic design. Uh, this is the DIN. This is a very small remote. You can see this is intended to be mounted vertically on a DIN rail. We just put it uh, in the shelf here. But as far as connectorization goes, there is one that's pretty unique up here. It's this with the black powder coat. This is a temp defender. And you can see that instead of the 50-pin Amphenol, we have these little flip-down gates. And this is a case where you just insert your wire right into the lower portion here, and you flip the lever down, and that locks it in. And this can be great if you have a smaller server room. You don't do a lot of monitoring, but you just want to have something that's quick and easy, because the gate holds it nicely, but it doesn't require a lot of specialized tools. If you're punching down to a 66 block or you're using a wire wrap panel, you're going to have some kind of a gun or other tool that's going to help you attach those wires. But with something like this, with these flip down piano style connectors, you really don't need that. So I hope this was helpful, showing you a little bit about the tech lab here at DPS. If you have any questions, if you want to see any more detail on any of these products, just give us a call. The phone number is 1-800-693-0351. You can also send us an email at sales at dpstele.com.